Scotty's back. G'day, I'm Hall of Famer Dane Swan. Wait, I'm not Hall, Hall of Famer Dane Swan, am I? Oh yeah. I've got some tattoos, not that many. I'm James Clements. This is the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things Aussie rules footy, of course. This is the Midweek Madness Show. It's Wednesday. Joining me are, of course, local weirdos, footy nuffs. Many, some would call them AFL experts. Uh, Alex Donnelly over there. You're using the word some quite loosely there. Okay. So a lot, a lot. Your no. mum? Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe not that. Right. Maybe my grandma. Grandparents, yeah. Shout grandparents, out to Val. Definitely. In between us is the stats boy, Liam McGallion. Yep, still sad uh, after North's uh, loss on the weekend, but uh, Boston did help in the basketball yesterday, so that's okay. Sure. <laughs> uh, and also a very special guest from way out west, Code Sports' very own Eliza Riley yes. jumps on a little bit later just to chat all things West Coast and Frio, which is Good very fun. fun. Mm. And uh, I don't know. I feel like I learned a lot. Because I just don't spend that much time thinking about Frio outside of how handsome Bailey Banfield yeah. is. Yep. Hence why he's in the handsome 22. Yeah. Which has got to mention, yeah. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow AFL Today across all your social channels, all that good stuff, because the cool thing is we do lots of stuff. Yep. So go look at it all. <laughs> cool thing is, also, midweek madness, no Thursday night footy. Why would we bother? Uh. So we're just going to go through some news from yeah, nahs and all the other good stuff. So let's start there. The news ticker, ticker, ticker. So the AFL is mooting, like throwing up these mooted changes, right? For the Father Son Academy points, the bidding process, all this sort of gear. And they're just like, no, nah, we told you we're going to do it. All the clubs are like, no, you didn't. Yeah. And they're I swear like, they no, never no, no, we it. did. And they're like, <laughs> you didn't. And they're like, no, nah. <laughs> we definitely did. It's like, you did. Someone's having a that's, fever dream. That's and, uh, definitely sitting in someone's outbox as a, dra- as a draft right now. They haven't hit send yep. on the email. The memo got lost by Pige- Carrie Pigeon that yeah. the AFL uses. Or for between all Gill and uh, Dylan. No, nah, nah, this is probably from like Andrew Dylan and Laura Kane when they changed maybe, offices, maybe. and it's like just sitting there on, on a <laughs> laptop that someone handed back. I don't know if awesome. you've ever had like your uh, your mail server on your phone just go completely kaput, yeah. and you got to read. It's probably happened. I've so, had oh, we sent it to everybody. Everyone was BCC. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Come on. It definitely didn't happen. So everyone's losing their minds. Essentially, basically, the teams are going to be adversely affected Carlson. by it. Which is obviously Carlton, but there's like three or four other. I think Collingwood as well. Pies still up there. There's like, Gold Coast. There's a few more that Richmond. are basically just like, yo, this. To, it's a bit unfair. To think, turn yeah. this in the middle of a season, yeah. where teams have planned for this exact thing using the existing rules halfway through a season, it's like changing the rules on the ground. It's like <laughs> this is well, we, we do that as well. But and it's... I'm just saying, this is also just some weird bush league AFL stuff. Can we just stop doing this? Just run yourself like a professional organization. Yeah, it's not rocket surgery sometimes. If you they know, come out now and say, we're going to do it from next year, exactly. it's Everybody fine because plan ahead. You've plan got ahead. there's been draft te- in between, yeah. right? There's been teams that planned for this year's draft last year yeah. with the way that they traded their picks. Well, so they, you look at how Gold Coast did it yeah. two years ago, right? Yeah. And it's the same sort of thing. So That's how Bris- Brisbane have got another Ashcroft coming through as yeah. well. You and said about teams planning. Teams plan five years before, three years before for the draft. Now they're just going to have to have six months to Well, your team spends about 20 minutes. Yeah, we spend 20 minutes because we don't have for Logan McDonald. Yeah, great oh, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it makes better. great decision stats. Exactly. <laughs> but it, it, it does feel very... Steve Silvani just spent 25 <laughs> minutes ringing around to his mates going, so do you like that kid? Yeah, I'm seeing Steve Silvani. Yeah, Wait, right. Who was at GWS? Yep, you. You can yeah. come with me. But it, <laughs> and he looks at GWS's <laughs> yeah. roster and is like, that one, that one, <laughs> that one. Sick. Now yeah, it's security's going to Carlton with that one, that one, that one. Yep. But it is. It, it does feel a bit ridiculous that a bit... A, yeah, lot, a lot, very wildly, a lot ridiculous. Ridiculous. wildly ridiculous, and it just sums up how the AFL's gone in the last five days. Yeah, it's almost like if your CEO can't get a haircut, I don't know if they <laughs> should be that. running. Oh yeah, he's back to the an haircut. entire like organization like the AFL. But Gill never got a haircut. Now he's running yeah, oh, Tabcorp. Yeah, cool hair. Again. He had a haircut. He just stuck with it. Yeah, and it was like um, that was a haircut. That was his style. Andrew Gill and Dylan. He's just like I don't even know what this is. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the other sort of mooted ideas going out there, no changes to the drug policy. Sure. No national reserves comp, which I think is kind of – if you want to be, again, a professional league, yeah. I feel like we need to be building yep. this out from the ground up. Right? I, I think we need under-18s under teams as well. I think well. under-18s need to be national. It didn't work. They had some we horrible players in the under-18s comps. Yeah, but you've still got day. the under-18 national championships every yeah. year, and, and that does work. But it's like you do need a national reserves comp as – Eliza Riley will point out later how pathetic West Coast's waffle team is. Exactly. I think there's yeah. there's a lot more scope essentially for the AFL to be professionalised. I'm like, Bring I'm back no curtain sh- raises. I'm no shrinking violet when it comes to criticising the AFL. We obviously all know that. But I think there's like, you should be 
the amount of time and money that they've spent for years and years and years and years on, ju- on junkets are like, oh, we're going to go learn from the Fed. <laughs> like China, What have example, they learned? Yeah. yeah, nothing. What have they learned? It's yeah. like, how do you build a professional sort of series of like, if you look at Europe, you look at like- EPL has Soccer their academies. You look 17s, at all the way 19s, around Europe, 23s. You look at the USA, where the way that G League has now been built is like a second tier competition College for and the things NBA. Like that. Colleges yep. as well, Baseball. stuff like that. Feeders, systems. Simple as that. The fact that the AFL, Aussie rules- specifically in this country, is so widespread and like badly governed clearly just down through these next levels, stinks. One thing Get I'll say on that is, though, the standard is still getting better. Like, like It is. I, in my opinion. I, know, I know a lot ha- of people would agree on that. Have a look at how, uh, I think yeah. it's Adelaide's reserves and West oh, Coast reserves that. are yeah. going. But I mean, in terms of like the footy, it's not like, oh, we, we need to do all this because because our the standard isn't sucks. good. Yeah. The game I'll, is still getting that, better. But this is, but it. This, I know this saying, is the yeah. sort of thing that should have been done 15 years ago. 100%. Like, not 100%. We, so we had curtain raises in like 1996. The reserve, the national reserves would play yeah. before your game. And I'm it was on great. That's great. Or at least just put them out at like cool suburban ovals. Yes. Use them. Right. But other fun stuff, sticking with the AFL. Laura Cade's like, nah, it's all good. Oh. <laughs> that 50 <laughs> meter call is fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> do do, do, do the AFL boy. really believe that that was the right call? Well, no, they didn't say it was the right call. They said there should have been a few other calls involved. They also ticked off the very oh. clearly touched yeah. goal earlier. It's like, what? It, are are they watching this? I'll get to this again in I a don't second. Care so let's AFL. not believe this too much, but yeah. like, wow. So they came out and basically said, Hunky dory. Yeah. Nothing to see here, folks. Nothing to see. <laughs> move along. Do move along. Think, nothing to see here. It's do they all think good. They, instead of owning up to the problems, just say, all right, we got it wrong. We will we'll try and get it better next time. Goes, That's better. Goes yeah. back to my theory is because it was Collingwood that were advantaged, yeah. who cares? But last year when Adelaide clearly got screwed, it's like, ah, no, we're <laughs> going to make everything better. And it's like, eh, North Melbourne, Collingwood, who cares? All right, other news, LDU. Oh, I saw this. Your beloved LDU. Yeah, I had an MRI this morning. I'm just reading about it now because I haven't really read into it too much because I was like, oh, I'm a bit, bit, bit worried being a North fan. Popped off. It hasn't come out yet yeah, what's happened or really at Undisclosed all. Undisclosed MRI. Undisclosed on MRI. On his knee, right? Yeah, on his knee. On that's his the knee. only thing that's come out. So praying he's okay because his last month has been awesome. Yeah, uh, he's been great. Yeah. Yeah. Tough one for Supercoach, which we'll get and to And Supercoach, later, which so. I have yeah. to do. Supercoach. Keller Mills, there's a captain. Yep. Can you just not play your captain all year? Like, why Why do you need him? I'm questioning. Like, the well, greatest he, team in the last 50 years. Who's he coming years. in for? Braden Wicks. Campbell. Sure. Oh, Campbell, yeah. yeah Braden Campbell. Fair um enough. I don't think his body's going great, to be honest. It says he's back in full training, but we've had the, this is him getting over the calf issue. But they've let slip a couple of times that oh, he's had Achilles problems and groin problems. So, he's like me, yeah, God, <laughs> hamstring hey, awareness. Yeah, I, I ran for I a train what, the other day and I nearly died. My, oh, good. I pinged my calf this morning. It's not great. Oh no! But no, I don't think his body's going as well as what they're letting on because they've not once they said originally that oh, a yeah, second half of the season he'll be back. But in the last six weeks, they haven't given us oh, around 17. Because you look at this, Are back in full training, yeah. the Swans play, I think, North Melbourne in like three or four weeks on a Saturday afternoon at the SCG. Like, that's the game you yeah, circle. Yeah, circle. I think because you're winning things like that, you can go, all right, we'll bring back He's still the captain and like, yeah. one of the most important players to the setup when he comes yeah. back in. Yeah, just kick that can down the road, make sure he's healthy for finals. I yeah, reckon that's what they're Clark thinking. Clark Keating him. Uh, Will Ashcroft. Ooh. That's a big name. Yeah. I don't mind. There's due back either in you know this week or the following. That's he's really one of good. the most exciting players to watch in the comp. He also had some of the most exciting hair. He's yeah. got great hair, yeah. Which is look, that's here for me. That might be actual our, football skills actually about here. Is that our next team? We have to do best uh, best hair. Oh, Walter, I can maybe I'm do that all one. All around there. Yeah, yeah. You could do that as uh, if. Oh, wait, wait, with, with a haircut I'm not saying like about that. me. Yeah. With a haircut what like that. What do you mean that? best hair? In this environment. <laughs> in this economy. <laughs> the you're going to do the haircuts? <laughs> okay. Uh, I it? thought you were doing the short kings. You haven't yeah. even done oh, that yeah, team. What is going kings. on, Stats yeah. Boy? Oh, there's lots going on. You know? I can't trust you to do the short <laughs> kings team. You want to do the haircut team? The most high profile of teams? This is ridiculous. He's bragging about all the clicks he gets, yet still can't put together his short kings team. He's views on Cricket Cricket's more important. Unbelievable. <laughs> Get 90,000 Australian views, pal. Absolute Whoa. Hall of Fame, big head on him. Uh, speaking of the Hall of Fame. Yes. That's what you call a segue. That's gentlemen. podcasting that 101. <laughs> that's professional podcasting. Uh, Dane Swan was leaked as a Hall of Famer to a, in a letter to its members. Yeah, it's not the first fun. Dane Swan leak, so that's not unusual. It was, yeah, it's a much better leak <laughs> than uh, other ones. Uh, <laughs> always fun when you have the 
Mick Malthouse is the word guy. Ah, oh, Dane Swan's awesome. And you're like, that's, you've said a lot worse <laughs> yeah. about Dane Swan yeah, in the past. He's like, oh, I've got to say all nice things about He's like, stuff. I've got four things I want to say that are nice. And then he's like, <laughs> like Mick Malthouse is also the sort of dude who's built out this pros and cons list. Yeah. And the cons is like, remember when he did this? Oh, God. Nah, I think remember I- when he did this? Oh, God. Remember when he did the God? Oh, God. Uh, remember when he talked back at you? I nearly dumped his bloody head off. Like, that is exactly what Malthouse has I gone I think they had a good so. relationship because I remember – Dane Swan used to say he was like his dad. Yeah, they were exactly. Yeah. But that's, yeah, he, but he's, it's his, his son who he wants to kick yeah, the yeah. crap out true, of. True, true. <laughs> it's the sort of dad who's just like, am I going to have to kick this 16-year-old kid out? Like, what am I doing? Like, this sucks, also, but yeah. still good, mate. It's when you look at a place as well it, with all the older guys. Like, usually you see Hall of Fame. It's like when you're, I don't know, 50, 60 plus, they usually put him in the yeah, Hall of Fame. he's like my age. And, and he's yeah, like half the age of everyone else there. But it's like, I think it's what, seven years after you retire or I something? I don't mind it because Swanee definitely should well, be in given, it. Given yeah. his pe- like pedigree, Brownlow medal, yeah. uh, Anzac Day medals, things like that, he's a walk up. I don't mind so it. He just looked a bit out of place. The entire point of this is we're talking about the Hall of Fame inauguration last session night. last night. Did you hear Durham about uh, Jason Dunster before we move on? It's like, oh, what's he like as a bloke? He's like, well, he's a great bloke, and you know, but he's the kind of person that would rather hang out with his dog than his mates, well, and he doesn't to, we'll own a to, dog. We'll get to legends in a second. So, but that's, that's a awesome. great call. That is a great call. <laughs> Just, the rest of the Hall of Fame. So Dane Swan gets leaked. They also drop off the oh, the Rat Pack, and it's like yeah. him. He's sure. Didak. And it? you're like, who are these old blokes? It's Alan Didak. That's Alan Didak. How old am I? I know, yeah. He looks 70. Yep. What is going on? <laughs> Dudes, get a handle on yourself. <laughs> Don't buy another Ute. Uh, Kelvin Templeton as well, fellow Brownlow winner along with Dane yeah. Swan. Yes. Uh, Chris McDermott. Now, Chris McDermott, uh, he was the first captain of the Adelaide Crows back in 1991. Gave a subtle whack to how bad Adelaide are going as well. Oh, did he? I didn't see oh, yeah. that. Uh, always been known as one of those sort of weird uh, power breakers out there in Adelaide. Uh, also hosted a footy camp when I was a kid in Ballarat. Really? Chris McDermott. Legend. That's pretty cool. Uh, Michael Graham, uh, Ray Schofield, and Ralph Robertson. Uh, we don't get enough Ralphs. I think well, that's because Ralph's from like- Simpsons, Yeah, he's from like the 19 bajillion. Yeah, so I was going to say, the 18, 1880s. The, here's a question. Did the Simpsons ruin Ralph as a name? Yes. Ooh, yes. Like no, yes. no adult- <laughs> Post-1998 has gone, you know what we should call our son? Ralph. 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 That's the dumb kid on The Simpsons, yeah. Well spotted, Stats, Yeah, like, I'm, try- I'm trying expl- to... No. Thank you for explaining my joke. You've done great. I'll All I know is uh, Ralph Robertson was one of the inaugural players at my in- original junior footy club, East really? Sydney. Oh, there oh, you go. And that's why he got made into the Hall of Fame. There you go. Bang. <laughs> Alex the, is next. Led the way for <laughs> Alex. All right, midweek winner and losers of the week. Midweek winner. Legends of the game. I love the Legends vibe. Dunstall going in there. Every time they just throw his stats again, oh, you're like, you're, unbelievable. you're just, that's unbelievable. not real. <laughs> I was there. I was alive when all this was Me happening. Too. And I still I was don't not. think it's real. 1,254 goals and like. He would have kicked more than Lockett if he didn't get injured late in his career. True that. Uh, I think everyone. Yeah, like he had a couple of, like two years in a row, he's got 132, at, 138 goals. Then a couple of years later, 145, yeah. 123 goals. But look at 96, 97, 98. Those last three years were injury real and he only yeah. kicked like 60 goals. If he stays yeah. fit and healthy. 97, 98. 96, he still kicked 102. Exactly. Yeah, so sorry, Chani, 90, 90, I remember 90, he did his knee in 97. 90, Eight, it was like a down year and he yeah. took kick 54 Sorry, which yeah. could win a Coleman in modern 96 football. in the final against the Swansea injured himself and that's sort of what set him downhill yes, yes. and if he stays fit I reckon he kicks 1400 sure it's unbelievable uh, Cherny brought up the on Twitter the question like what happens would Fitzroy still be a club if Dunstall had gone there instead Ooh. of to the Hawks or like Carlton never apparently got back to him I think he has did. a point you got and like if Fitzroy yeah. have like a hundred Pretty, goal kicker he's yeah. like just absolutely smashing it maybe crowds go with, through the roof I was about to say Paul Roos delivering it out to him as yeah. well he would Gary have left. Pert in the back yeah. line yeah all the good stuff Lynchy there Nathan just Buckley learning off him was there in the nineties as well Buckley was oh, no, Fitzroy. Yeah. Didn't he get? Didn't he? He start was there? a Brisbane Bears. Brisbane, oh, Brisbane Bears. Bears yeah. My bad. My different bad. teams. Yes, yes, yes. My Pay attention, stats man. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was not alive. Loser of the week uh, he is the mid-year leader for dumbest idiot made of a player. <laughs> uh, Braden Maynard, who we all know is a war criminal. Um, Connor Clark, uh, the bloke you might remember, was out there and got busted for running on the field. I was uh, there. That was that was pretty funny. He almost got away. I didn't well. even know that there was a pitch invader too. Well, they're not allowed to show it on TV. See, anymore, they didn't yeah. even mention it on the nah. on the commentary, so I didn't know till I read it in the paper on Monday. They're not allowed anymore to. St- to stop people from doing and getting their like famous famous uh, can't you just say there's an idiot on the field no they're not allowed to, apparently I do like it so oh we don't want to encourage it it's like I, but we kind of want to see it but social media no, yeah exactly yeah. it was funny at the game as well there was four they, the four security guards stacked on top of it because most of the time nice. you're just like 
Nothing will beat the one where that Kiwi security guard absolutely cut that dude in yeah, half. Because yeah. this is it. I feel like security guards come in two different forms nowadays. Sure. One is the one who's absolutely going to delete you off yeah. the face of the planet. And the other one, you could probably get away from him. Right? Yeah. Because he's just like, oh, job. God, I've got to do my job. Actually, just see the I'm one. I'm getting paid $20 an hour. I'm sitting on a plastic chair. Did, what am I meant to do again? Oh, God. The funny thing is, oh, no. What I've got to do it. What about he's, already, he's already halfway <laughs> over there. Like, what am I doing? Do you see the one of the baseball gets shot with the taser yes, gun? The ta oh. he, did a, he did the flip and then he got tased. That looked and it was, painful. Uh, that was pretty but funny. But that's American. Like, next time they'll just shoot him. So, like, <laughs> both instances, on. Jim has said, though, you could lose your job. The, the guy that's like, just dawdling over. And then the other guy that just deletes <laughs> someone. The they're like, mate, you're not supposed to clothesline him. Like, it's still assault. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, like Ben Keys trying to ragdoll the dude that walked into the middle that of the That was fire. great. That was great. But anyway, so he has already been, I think, Banned uh, for life. Banned for life with uh, at least a 10 year, uh, a 10, 15 year. Five year. Was it five? Five year parole, basically. Five year parole, basically, where they're going to reassess. Which life to five years. Five to life is nothing. I reckon <laughs> it should be at least 10 to life. Come yeah. on, mate. Like, there is a very special idea. Like, it is very cool going to the footy with your mates. You take that away from somebody. Yeah. Don't run on the Stay field. But here. also, ta tack on another five years for being a dumb idiot and posting a photo on social media with the with grass, the grass stain, stain on, on your, your legs. Yeah. Just the that's dumbest just dumb. of idiots. Let's do some Yunas really quickly today because we're Eliza Riley coming up after this. Hey, should Connor Rosie have gotten off? Oh, Zach Butters. Zach Butters. Butters. Uh, should Zach Butters have gotten off? Uh, yes. He no. should have because he's on my uh, super coach team and because he's awesome and I love him. But he hits someone but in the face. But also he hit a dude. Like, oh, what are we doing he here? He hits slap with literally the, the palm All of his right, hand. All right, hold on. All right, I get to slap you All in right, the face it. and it's I don't get in trouble. <laughs> exactly. right. well, hey, Zach Butters is on camera. He didn't get in trouble. Zach Butters did this on a footy field. Alex can now do it to Stats Guy. Hey, Char, you can't do anything. Let's <laughs> yeah. go. go Christine's internet's gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, genuinely, I think that was not that bad. If... I, all right, if he actually hit him or hurt him or, like, he just tapped him. Come Mason on, guys. Mason Redmond got suspended for the exact same thing. I feel like at the start of the season you guys would have said that. No, I, to switched. be honest, I'm just basically – I'm happy he didn't get rubbed out because he's on my super same, coach team. But uh, mostly, though, this I think – This is like you telling your kids not to hit each other in the face. This is it. I still reckon <laughs> Pendles and Lockie Neal, everybody's, like, just, you know, the short arm – Jesse Jack Hogan. Bow. To the uh, to the guts. I still think basically there should be pretty uh, hefty fines for this sort of stuff, if nothing else. Like, I agree with the fine. Yeah. So in terms of suspension, perhaps not for these sort of things. I feel like this is it. If the AFL was a professionally run organisation, oh, we'd probably oh. have a better idea of what we, well, at least the MRO, right? They'd have a full time MRO. We'd have a full time yes. MRO that could actually break down specific instances of what this like, and you can't argue away from it basically because you've just hit this point. They try to do this, and then they completely keep walking it back. It's ridiculous. Now, Stats Boy. Mm -hmm. Zach Butters, that's good. Yep. Other ones that happened during this weekend. Yes. That I'm... the AFL have then involved themselves in after the case. I was, I'm glad we're talking about this. this. Did the Ruse good. get robbed? Yeah, nah. I said it only week, nah. Shouldn't, shouldn't be losing when you're up by 54 points. But AFL needs to do better. It's very simple rules. Are getting like each week there's a They're game that gets ruled by the umpires. Leading into. Yes. Should the AFL be adjudicating calls after the fact? Yeah, nah. I'm gonna go nah. Are they are they stupid? They they cop more hate if they even if they came out and said it was wrong, they're gonna cop hate because they got it wrong. So this they should is, just I, not I, talk I, I, about I, I, it. I'd rather them come out. Like, Do you think? Yeah, we stuffed that one up because you have a look. Yeah. Think of think of how angry in the soccer sense we got at certain VAR calls this season yeah, yeah. in the EPL. And after the fact they've either come out and said this is why we did this or this yeah. is why we this uh this one, oh yeah, we actually stuffed that well, one up. Well, I bad. wouldn't mind them doing after the fact. But yeah. If you listen to Laura Kane's description of the 50 meter penalty call, Confusing, the yeah. way that she talks talks about it, it's like okay but if you follow that process that means it has to be a 50 meter penalty therefore Bailey Scott should be having a shot 20 meters out near on directly in front of goal which, I believe this which was, means North Melbourne win this was also then brought up by the simple fact of like the explanation was that oh they'd blown the whistle mm. but they had not received instructions yet so that means by you've the run letter of the law Every time they before the umpire <laughs> says something, you can do whatever the yeah, hell you exactly. want oh. until someone. they say what they're trying to make you do. It is utterly ridiculous. Yeah. This is my entire thing. I don't think the AFL should be adjudicate, adjudicating calls after the fact because it's basically my NBA corollary. It's like, let's NBA go to the official it, yeah. and find out why they were right. Yeah. You know, it's That's like, oh, it is, let's yeah. go to the AFL. How did you not get this one wrong, guys? That, and they're like, well, we didn't yeah. get it wrong because we said we didn't. That's and what like, I think. This is just making it worse. 
You're morons. Yeah, they no matter what, they're going to try and find a way. All right, so maybe ten percent of the time they're going to go. All right, we're wrong, but they're going to try and find a way they to back up their own week people. With the their free kick against um, exactly. So there's exactly. uh, there's no point in them doing it if they're going to be biased towards their own people. Nice one. All right, really quickly, Will Charlie Dixon, who was uh, also Ooh. rubbed out, but on the old Sanifel. Uh, yes, Sanifel. 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 It's all good. <laughs> Just run my words together. Uh, he's going to play at AFL level again. What do you reckon? Yeah, nah. Yeah, he's, nah. on a, he's on a contract, isn't he? I think he? he comes back. No, nah, yeah. I don't think he gets another he game He has been year. horrible, but he's I think just, he will. He's just copped a three-week suspension where what, round 14. He's copped three weeks. He'd have to put together a body of work in the twos to get another another game. He can't get a kick at the moment. And by then, Port Adelaide will be tumbling down the ladder anyway, so why would you pick him? Uh, I think they'll pick no, I think him just based on the simple finals. fact that he's Charlie Dixon and he'll like, if you don't pick me, I'll bash you. <laughs> his, <laughs> right. knee, his knees are like bone on bone at the oh, moment. Right. You just run away from him. Yeah, Not I a think... medical doctor, just check. <laughs> uh, righto, there you go. Good stuff. That was some ENRs. Let's now go to our good friend, Code Sports' very own, Eliza Riley, right after this. All right, now we welcome on from way out west. My good friend Ben Dixon would start singing the song. He, <laughs> he really would. He, he loves leaning into having us sing. Anyway, it is Code Sports' very own Eliza Riley. What is going on, Eliza? How are you trucking? G'day. Um, yeah, beautiful day out west. Both oh. clubs sort of not much on today, to be honest. So, so you've got me on a good day. I don't have much to do. So I thought, oh, Perfect. <laughs> Works out very nice. Uh, I mean, is that just basically they're just like, all right, we don't have Harley Reid for another week. Let's put the queue in the rack and just like not do much. Yeah, yeah that's literally it. We're just planning um, our um, seceding from the rest of Australia at the moment. So we've got two weeks of planning um, and then we'll get back to you guys in a fortnight. That's, that's, what our plans that's are. great. <laughs> I love it. That what? big wall so he doesn't leave as well. Yes. Yeah. The no Harley zone. It's yeah. like everything. <laughs> everything but the way. Um, what's the vibe been? Out with, especially, if we'll start with the West Coast Eagles. Like, after last year's just soul sucking disaster, now this year, like, what, three wins already? Like, what is the vibe over there for Eagles fans? How are they feeling outside of Harley Reid? Like, how are they feeling, do you reckon? I think there definitely is those those green shoots of life, which we definitely haven't been able to see the, for the past two, three years due to all the injuries mm. and sort of drama that has surrounded the West Coast Eagles. But, I mean, at the same time, while we have had some wins this year and seen the club, you know, really take it up to the likes of Melbourne, I think it was probably the best win they've had so far this year. Still only pretty much equal with what the output was last year, but the, the good thing is there's still half a season to go. There's still half a season to pick up a few more wins and um, get ahead of the ledger and climb up the ladder a little bit. But it still is, I think, tempered expectation because, you know, really good wins still seem to be followed up by um, some pretty poor losses in recent weeks to the likes of, you know, Adelaide a couple of mm, weeks ago in gross. South Australia. So... There is still this sort of timidness for Eagles fans, not knowing quite what to expect, but I think it definitely is more enjoyable to be an Eagles fan this year than it has been the last few. So outside of our beloved, whoa, Harley Reid, uh, (laughs) what are the other points of optimism for the team, do you think? I think that they're just competitive, mostly within games. Like there has been a couple of blowouts as we've spoken about, but it's the fact that they're not getting, you know, they're not out of games by quarter time, which they were at several points uh, last year where they just get blown away and sort of half time the margin would already be 60, 70 points and it's not even worth sitting through the second half of footy. Like Mm. the Eagles have been pretty consistent this year and sort of refined a few areas of their game they really want to improve on, which one of them is inside 50s and scoring, which is obviously going to be more exciting for fans to watch. But the other thing I think has been really exciting as well is just the renewed sort of force their veterans have become. You know, the likes of Elliot Yo, Jeremy McGovern, but back to pretty much where they were, you know, four years ago when they hadn't been through all the injury woes they had. So they've really been driving from the front and have, you know, brought the kids along with them, whereas in the past few years it's been the kids fighting a pretty lonely battle, whereas now they've got the the people around them to support them. See, stats guy, this is what optimism looks like. Exactly. You know, as a North Melbourne fan, all we want is uh, an honourable loss, and uh, we've had a couple. Uh, like one. Maybe, one, maybe one. this whole year. Maybe two. Whereas the Eagles this year, as Eliza said, they've just gotten really close to some of the big teams, and that's all you want to see from improving sides. Now, mm. I... In our notes, we literally have just written down Alex has a take. Yeah. So Alex, <laughs> here we go. Is, is obviously this year has been great with all those veterans playing well, but 
I, I've seen some takes out of Western Australia that seem wild. I saw someone say that they think the Eagles can win a flag before Fremantle. Ooh. But looking at West Coast list, you've got Gaff, Sheed, Yo, McGovern, Darling, Cripps, and Hunt, all 29 years and older. Is there a concern or a realistic view that there is another fall coming before West Coast actually start climbing? Because you're not going to get, you know, Yo and McGovern playing this well potentially next year because they are old and mm. injury riddled. Yeah. I think it is a pretty valid concern and it's definitely one that's been on the forefront of Eagles fans' minds. But I guess the thing that they are seeing now with these older blokes getting a bit of continuity in their bodies and staying on the park is they're actually able to have a bit more of an influence and, you know, sort of help improve and develop the kids around them, whereas that just hasn't been a reality in the past few years because they have been so injury riddled that, they weren't having much of a say in an impact on the field and that obviously, you know, flows down to the kids beneath them who they're obviously trying to hand the baton to a little bit in the next few years. So I think that they are still a little bit worried, but the thing is that, you know, like you said, it still is another few years away. You get another few years of development into those kids, maybe pick up a few more experienced sort of heads in the free agency yeah. and trade opportunities that are going to come the Eagles way at the end of this year and obviously getting really high top end draft picks through the door as well so just sort of you know mitigating that drop off a little bit and planning as best as they can to to ensure that it isn't going to be another recession before you know one step forward two steps back that yeah. we're not going to be in that situation. They've got three years to get it right before Tasmania comes in and takes <laughs> yeah, all their draft picks. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's three years to get a lot of games into your players like Harley Reid, Jimmy yeah. and such and make sure they keep Oscar Allen before if they're not set on moving up on the ladder by then, it is a long, dark path for probably five years like or so. Look at Doom and Glenn. No, they're, yeah. they're settled no, down, he's mate. Right, he's right. They're good. The kids are fine. And you're <laughs> yeah, like, no, nah, got to bury for another 10 years, Jim. But it's, no there's a lot sense. of old guys there that could fall off like that. Yeah, and, I agree. And of course, three of their best players this year. And what we're talking about is literally trying yeah. to fill those gaps. I wouldn't be too worried being West Coast. They're such a big club, such a big fan base compared to like in North Melbourne or other teams recruiting. People don't mind going to West Coast. So like Oof. I think you wrote, he's not going to go there. Stats yeah. people will go he's there. Not, so. They're not going to pick him. <laughs> yeah. 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 Stats guy was a believer of uh, that North Melbourne didn't need Harley uh, Reid. That was, that was a while ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, Oscar Allen, we mentioned him there. Do we... Do we see him back this week? I think that's the latest, right, out of uh, show the favorite. Eagles. Show favorite, Oscar Allen. Hmm. Yeah, Oscar, like he's got one main box to tick tomorrow during main training, but the the expectation is that he will be out there um, against Essendon yes. this weekend. He's Ooh. done all his rehab. He's got no pain in that knee um, that he's obviously been rehabbing since round one. And the Eagles have sort of spoken about this year just how – hard it is to be a forward in their in their Waffle Eagles setup, um, which was obviously, you know, they've sent a few players back from injury through the Waffle this year, but there's no point sending your Lamborghini back to the country. I think it's <laughs> probably exactly. going to be the, the case with Oscar because they're, they're Waffle Eagles. Look, they're struggling. Like, they're yeah. not generating many inside 50s. There's not much to be gained for Oscar going and playing as a key forward in but that ha- side. Now so, you've got a Lambo parked next to a Ferrari in the J train. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we love like, it. What do we do here? We like, them, it's, yeah. I feel like there's just actually a big forward Isn't controversy the brewing. Hummer? Yeah, he's just a big man. No, he's a Ferrari. Yeah. He's Ferrari. got that speed. He's amazing. <laughs> I'm all about the J train, Jakey Waterman. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, they've got Essendon this week. Yes. The Sheedy Jacket Wave Bowl, <laughs> yeah. can we call it? <laughs> I don't like know. Uh, the Eagles always play them tight. So are they a chance, even if this is on the road? Because that's obviously been their big sticking point, right? Like mm-hmm. winning away from home. I reckon you're a little bit too optimistic. I've been pretty optimistic so far, but I reckon that's a bridge too far from <laughs> you there. Um, <laughs> I, you know, you'd hope the Eagles are going to be competitive but there is this stigma as well about coming off the bye and just mm-hmm. what that's done to teams this year add in the complication of going interstate and, and trying to you know knock off a team that is very much wanting to be there at the point in the finals I think Essendon probably deservedly still are the favorites but you know you'd hope that the Eagles can put in a good performance but they have lost Dom Sheed to injury and won't get Tim Kelly back by the sounds of it so their midfield is still a bit of a question mark yeah, with cool. no Harley as well yeah the midfield's going to yeah, be cool yeah, isn't it? yeah I think we've just <laughs> summed it up there but is there a correlation also with uh just per teams as well as Frio when they play in this either early Saturday game or early Sunday game 
and genuinely been asleep for the first half yeah. because technically it's 11 a.m. and they're usually <laughs> getting brunch down at Cottesloe or something. Like, <laughs> what is it with these early starts in in the Saturday and Sunday games for Perth teams? They just can't win these games. Well, if I'm half asleep as a journalist trying to cover the game, <laughs> I think that gives you a pretty good indication yep. of what the two teams That's are going vibe, through when yeah. they do get these really early slots. But at the same time, they're professional athletes. Like they... <laughs> They train <laughs> during this this time frame during the week, like early morning. So I don't really see why they do take that little bit longer to switch on. Like they do try and stay within that Perth sort of time zone, even when they are interstate, and try and keep their bodies adapted to that. So maybe it does um, have a bit of a say, um, you know, particularly during the the summer months when there is that extra hour tacked on. Those oh, yeah. those ones are particularly hard. But you'd think that the teams would have um, gotten their heads around it by now. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a lot of complaining last week from Freo fans going, oh, we're in the early game. The oh, boys are still waking on, up. I feel fans. like you just search out complaining, though. I don't know how you do this. <laughs> That's it's just like, these algorithms. Oh, every, yeah. every, yeah, your algo is just everyone yelling at you or people complaining. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, everybody's yelling about this. It's like two people are yelling, Alex. <laughs> you're one of them. That's enough. That's <laughs> enough. I, don't I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about that. Anyway, over teams. to the Dockers. Uh can you convince us that Freo yeah. aren't frauds, Eliza? <laughs> what are we doing here? I mean, they Roller smash coaster. Melbourne oh. and then they come over here and get smashed by the dogs. It it does my head in. It says and something about Melbourne, doesn't it? It does. It does also say something about Freo, obviously. Yeah. So I don't know. Can you convince us they're not the Fremantle frauds? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Flag Mantle? We'll change yeah. that. Oh, yeah. That was a couple weeks ago. Yeah. It's Fraud Mantle. What's going <laughs> on? <laughs> um, I think what happened on the weekend against the Western Bulldogs is the Dockers completely lost sight of their identity. Mm. Like we know <clears throat> as frustrating as they can be to watch at times this year, their best football and their best wins have come when they're that really dour sort of defensive team who are conceding low scores and, you know, their sort of ball movement and attacking opportunities stem from that and it's sort of, you know, put two pieces of the puzzle together and then the third falls into place naturally. So I think they got lulled into a bit of a false sense of security with what happened against Melbourne and just how easy it was for them to, to pile on scores and, you know, what was it, they kicked 141 points. Yeah, but very rare for Freo. <laughs> Fremantle, like, doing that. So I think they got maybe a little bit ahead of themselves thought, you know, we can play this sort of shootout style of footy and, you know, pile on the scores and it's just not going to work against the better teams in the competition. Like they are a defensive team and they strayed away from that. So if they can get back to that sort of, you know, contest defensive method, you know, I think they can be be there, thereabouts in the race to the top eight. But for me, I, I'm still going to take a bit of convincing. Mm, I like yeah. it. I mean... What's the vibe locally around the Dockers, though, right? Like, they they are obviously super talented. Um, Flopped last year. Yeah, like, last year was a disappointment, I feel like. But they can sort of have these moments where they look wildly dominant and it really seems like they struggle to stay dominant. Like, what do you think? Yeah, 100%. Like, they just – they sort of seem like they're not confident in their own ability um, at this stage. Like, they're still a pretty young team, but they're not – they're not walking the walk. Like mm. we all thought heading into that Western Bulldogs game, you know, this is a chance for them to make a statement. This is the chance for them to say, you know, we're going to be right there and about in the top four hunt come the end of the season. And then we see what happens on the weekend. They they fall in convincing fashion and it was like a 157-point swing from their result the game before Crazy. where they beat the Demons by 92. So I think that they do need to get, a bit of swagger, to be honest. They need to sort of develop that self-belief in themselves because when they do play their best footy, which is obviously defensive, they have taken it up to some pretty good teams this year. Like obviously drawing with Collingwood, um, you know, a week before they did what they did to Melbourne. So I think that it's going to be a case of them actually believing in themselves a little bit, but whether they think they're capable of doing it this year, you know, I'd argue it's because Bailey, Bailey Banfield and Andy Brayshaw are too handsome. <laughs> too handsome. <laughs> Bailey yeah. Banfield is very yeah, handsome. Were they both in the handsome 22? Brayshaw wasn't, Bailey Banfield was. Oh. Yeah, well, Banfield was definitely in your handsome yeah. 22. 22 yeah. But yeah. Andy Brayshaw well, should in probably be. Yeah, for recognition of Bailey Banfield, yeah. I didn't expect it to come in the form of the most handsome players. So I was thinking all <laughs> really stuff, but, you know, we'll, we'll take it. Bit we're, we're on top of the important matters here, Eliza. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Awesome like, dudes got this. Was five, and most was five handsome. In there if another nah, Fife was not. His body's broken now. 
Oh, that's nah. a bit stiff, I reckon. Yeah, Speaking of Nat Five, what do we do with him? Because Ooh. it seemed like having him in the midfield on the weekend, it obviously didn't work. And mm. hindsight being wonderful, probably should have tagged Bont. In games where Frio do need to have a tagger and shut someone down, is that where like Fife goes in as the sub and someone like a, a Clark can do a run with role? Or does that take away from Clark's best abilities? And I just don't know what to do with Fife personally. Mm. Yeah, I think when the Dockers have tag and it's been a bit sporadic this season, they're generally not the team to do that really hard, you know, sort of one-on-one tag that we've seen return to fashion a little bit in recent weeks. They generally send Hayden Young to the person they yep. want to clamp in the midfield because he's that big body, he's stronger, yeah. defensively minded, obviously coming from the half that um, last year, he's already got that defensive mindset. So he's been sort of the go-to for these defensive roles and they um, have generally backed in their own midfield on most occasions to get it done, which isn't the worst call considering they are, you know, the best clearance deferential team in the AFL. So it hasn't, you know, wronged them too many times this season except for the bond on the, the weekend. Bond, yeah, yeah um, that, that didn't work. <laughs> also, when Nat, Nat Five tried to run through Isaac Haney, that really didn't work either. No, no. That was funny yeah. though. Yeah. <laughs> that was good fun, yeah. Uh, do you see a resolution in the Dockers sort of two ruck <laughs> conundrum like between Luke Jackson, Sean Darcy, like how does the second half of the year play out, do you think? Yeah, it is going to be really interesting, but the thing that still is in Fremantle's favour is just that they haven't had these two on the park for long enough to really develop that sure. continuity, I don't think. Um, you know, given <laughs> Sean Darcy has been injured for pretty much this whole season, he's obviously strung together a few games now, but had pre-season knee surgery got back, did a calf, missed a few more weeks, finally got back and is finding basically his feet. Like this is basically his round one, two, three, given he hasn't been able to string together the games of football this year. So I think if the Dockers um, are going to get it right, they need to rely on getting scorpion impact from one or both of them because if they can't, there's, there's probably no place for both of them in, in the team. Like they really need to get two or three goals out of Jackson a game, which yeah. they did on the weekend. Jackson was pretty good up forward. But Darcy as well, you know, he's probably the one who's more of a ruck than a forward, whereas Luke's yeah. more versatile. So, Sean, you know, you can't really afford to just sit him on the bench. He needs to develop his forward craft a bit more. And if he can do that, then that's how the Dockers will make it work. I think the ruck thing at the moment is you either have long hair or you're bald. And if you're in between, <laughs> Sean cool. Darcy. Like, this is Luke it. Jack- Luke Jackson's got Luke the long, Jackson hair. long hair. Brody yeah. Grundy, long hair. Brody Grundy, yeah. long hair. Gorn. Tommy Coney, Gorn long hair. A little Gorn. beard, long Ball. beard. <laughs> See, it's just simple. I look at things in a very I simple think terms. I has got the crew cut, though, so. Yeah. yeah true. Cherry's yeah. got a helmet. Uh, <laughs> that helps. But would you, it, if this doesn't work out, because Sean Darcy's body's obviously becoming a problem with a lot of injuries in the past two seasons, the investment into Luke Jackson, given he's, what, 21, 22, he's the guy there for the next decade. Do you cash in on Sean Darcy, given he's on such a fat contract over, I think it's what, the next five years, Mm. and try and get a first rounder in because it's like his value won't be as high this time next year if he keeps getting injured? Yeah, it's it's a great question for Fremantle to ask themselves because they, you know, they wanted him on the list long term and he's now signed until 2030. So (laughs) Yeah, that's so worry. Yeah. It's yeah, like hi, hi Geelong, ball. first round pick. Here's Sean Darcy, yeah, it's and then the, and then the Freeman. It's and the, the Pitto problem, right? And then it's Freeman the will go to Sydney with their four first rounders and say, "We'll take Chad Warner and Logan McDonald." Thanks. Oh. Yeah. yeah, good pipe dream. Yeah, I like that. It is a tough one because obviously Sean's had his injury woes, mm. but the thing the Dockers have been saying, you know, sort of internally, is they're not super confident that Luke Jackson could get through a full season exactly, playing yeah. as the number one rock because he mm. is not, you know. That big, what do they call it? Um, thick Sean boy. Darcy. Yeah. <laughs> That's one no. way to <laughs> thick boy. Sean He's Darcy, not a big thick boy. who can come up against, you know, your, your Grundies, your yeah. Toby Nanks on a week-to-week basis. Like he, his body will break down a little bit if he is yeah. forced to do that and that was the sort of thinking tying up the two rucks at the same time. So it is a really interesting um, hypothetical and one definitely to keep an eye on, but the, the caveat is that Luke Jackson isn't quite physically developed yeah. enough yet to, to bang around. Well, that's a, yeah, no, good call. He's 21. Yeah, he's, he's <laughs> 22. Still, 22. 22. 22. 22. 23 in September. Yeah, okay. still young, yeah. That's child. Uh, 
Freo of Gold Coast on Sunday. Two young, fun teams. I use fun pretty loosely when I'm talking about Freo. But what do you like, mean? They're fun. They're fun. They are fun at times. This is the thing. It's so wrong. I, I kind of need them to be fun all the time. Uh, the thing is, Perth is very clearly below the 28th degree latitude, so Gold Coast are definitely not going to win, right? <laughs> so, Because this is our entire theory on the AFL Today show that once Gold Coast go below the 28th degree latitude, they have no hope. Out so Freo should be fine on Sunday, right? <laughs> They should be, and you'd hope they would be, because if they don't issue a response up to what happened next weekend, then the fraud mantle argument becomes oh, headlines. <laughs> I love but it. But it's yeah, you know that as you as you mentioned, the Suns have really struggled yeah. to travel this year. But the thing is, they have um, had some wins in Perth against West Coast, yeah. albeit in the past few years, they but. Have. They do seem to light off the stadium um, a little bit and obviously smash the Eagles lights when they were here this time last year. So there is that up their sleeve if the Gold Coast really want to put up a fight. Um, they seem seem to light the, the Craypot Stadium, um, <laughs> but it's a bit of a up in the air because Fremantle, you'd expect, will come out breathing fire and really want to get back on the winner's list after what happened last weekend. Love it. All right. There we go. I think that's it. Uh, Eliza, thank you so much for jumping on. Nice little snapshot. You know, we get so stuck in with the VFL over here. We do. Hey, we do. Hey, and man, this is it. Sydney, Sydney we got man Sydney here. boy over here. He's like <laughs> battering on about uh, the apparent best team in the last 50 years this year, <laughs> Sydney Swans. That is you. And, uh, you know, we don't ever hear too much out west. So thanks for jumping on with us. Well, we've got Harley Reid, so yes. we'll see them. We'll never see you blokes again. <laughs> <laughs> Checks out. Awesome. Thanks, Eve. Thanks. All right, how good was that chat with Eliza? I don't know. She really put stats board in his place. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Harley Reid, don't need him, you, re you reckon? Oh, geez, nah. I'll tell you. Hey, let's talk about that rising star race that we brought up last week. So we just mentioned Harley Reid with Eliza. Uh, Sam Darcy was rubbed out as well, so they're both out of this race. Stats boy, can you break down the race for us a little bit more yeah. with your beloved Warlord, Warlord now leading the pack? He is. He's the heavy favorite now, which I'm absolutely loving being a North fan. you got Harley Reid, obviously, out, but I'm just going to compare the stats between Wardlaw and Harley Reid, which is compare a bit interesting. Pair. Compare the pair. I think well, uh, Reid's had a bit more of an impact, quick. but the stats are really similar. you got... Uh, what was it? Harley Reid, eight in disposals, nine contested, five clearances, five score involvements, five tackles. You've got Wardlaw, exactly the same stats, but he averages more disposals. But that's not exactly the same. What do you mean? You said he's got exactly the oh, same sorry. stats. Nine in disposals, nine contested, five clearances, and five score involvements. Very, very similar on the stat sheet. I think I, I could still argue, being an North fan, I'd still say Reid has more impact, unfortunately. But Wardlaw has had a really, really good season, and the stats aren't similar. How many fins has he done, though? Walter has done a fair few fans, but no, not as much as I Where are the highlights? That's true. Mullet and black highlights? boots. What do you mean? The mullet you and the black weekend? boots. He looks awesome. Yeah, and he can't touch in the shirt. Yeah. Anyway, that's all I mean is that's why Walter's up there. A lot of people would say, oh, he might not be as flashy, but his stats are right up there with yeah the nice. best rookies. Uh, I'll tell you what, he looked flashy on Sunday. Uh, on, the, on the weekend, he was Very flashy. Nice. you got Darcy Wilson, uh, who you guys have been loving, 16 disposals, 0.7 goals, three score involvements. Just bring out the stats. That's why the odds, I think, are more heavily wet. Uh, way towards uh, George Wilder. Ollie Dempsey, 17 disposals, just under a goal a game, five score involvements. Then Caleb Windsor, he's been really good for the Ds, but again, nah, just no the, he, he has a lot less disposals, 14 disposals, four score involvements, just the two clearances. So the stats drop off dramatically from Harley Reid and George Wilder to the rest. So they would have been the two right up there if Harley Reid was there. So the biggest is, difference in this would be if Sam, like Sam Darcy's stats, it would be completely different, but you also look at yeah. it and be just be like, yeah, it's him. He's been yeah. awesome. It's yeah. yeah, that that's more you, you trust the eyes. If like if obviously if they weren't suspended, you could make an argument Sam yeah. Darcy over uh Harley Reid. Yep. I but, mean you could, but you'd be nah, laughed at no, room. Yeah. Not as much impact, but he has been yeah. great. You yeah. can do a lot of things, but you also bucks. get laughed at. So you <laughs> but know. all I'm saying is Wardlaw is pretty close to Harley Reid. Harley Reid definitely has been the better player. Uh best hair. Probably the Warlord. He's got, good, yeah. got great hair, but yeah. it's the same as like every single Ollie? one of those other Geelong carpenters. Yeah, there, but so. Harley Reid has the same hair as Ollie Dempsey. Does that mean Harley Reid will end up at he's got Geelong? A he's got a different uh, headband though. He usually has the darker one, doesn't he? Yeah, and Ollie Dempsey oh, wears the remember. pink one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So does that mean that Harley Reid will end up at Geelong with the hairband crew? Maybe. Not Probably. Come. I don't know, all that money that you they've saved. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, hell, oh, the taxpayer <laughs> park. Yeah, yeah Wardlaw is yeah, a lock. Future blue Harley Reid. Wardlaw's uh, a lock for Rising Star. Yeah, I... There you Unless go. he gets injured or Say or with more confidence. He is an absolute lock. That's going to be something for North fans. Two years in a row getting rising stars, so that's a bit of fun. And you'll still finish last. Still finish last. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, rising, <laughs> two rising stars, how many wins? Hey, hey, hey. Rising star <laughs> doesn't mean you're good now. It means you're good in the future. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Lewis Taylor won like rising star. That was an outlier. Slevo won the rising star. Oh, I don't want to talk about that. So you got one. rising stars coming at the wild. We do. We actually do. <laughs> Great. <laughs> All right, let's do a quick super coach look in. Yeah. Ahead of round 15. 
15, 15. I'm bringing in Charlie Kerno. Yeah, a lot I of people just, are. I don't know if I want to, though. Talk it out. Go. Their run-in's very good. He's going to win the Coleman. If he kicks three or four goals a game, there is at least 90 points on offer per game. He's priced at 440-something. Given there's not many f- forward Forwards. options, I've already got Heaney, I've got Flanders, i got Fisher. Where does he rank? Let's have a quick so look. I'm backing him in because his big games, he goes very big. So I Harry McKay actually has a better average than Kerno, which yep. is surprising because yeah, maybe he gets a few more touches. Um, but Kerno, so you're obviously trying to get the top six forwards. Yeah. He is currently, I think, uh, 11th or something. But it, in this last bit of uh, the, the the season, he could definitely push up like, those There's, there's games against Richmond, North Melbourne, yep. West Coast, yeah. St Kilda. Like I'd back him to have a better uh, end of the season. Port Adelaide. Than Waterman yeah. and Dylan Moore, in yeah. my opinion. But I still don't know if I want to get him in. I still kind of feel like we can get to six without a yeah. key position Carlton forward. Because look, I just don't trust them week on week to be able to, for you to be able to pick which one's going to have like the half. Like Charlie is the more consistent yeah, but if Char- in terms but of if, kicking goals. If Charlie Harry might be a better six super for me, so if if he's F six for me, I'm fine. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. I'd rather look back in someone like uh, so Luke Jackson. Obviously, is there. You've got Rochelle. <laughs> oh, not Rochelle. Uh, you Rankin. got Rankin. 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 Yep. He's just come back. I've from got the, Rankin uh, in thing. there. So. I feel like you're six. I just don't know if I can trust Charlie. So outside of that, though, Stats Boy, who are the other names that we're looking at this week? Uh, it's very thin on the ground again. Carl yeah. Warner. So we just spoke he to was Eliza. Great. He was really good last week, but yes. he might lose his spot again with Chapman coming back mm. feasibly. Sure, uh, surely Sean Maker. I know they've Sean got the draft, really but it's good. like you're thinking two weeks down the track, Sean Maker and got, Dowling from yes. uh, Dowling Adelaide. was really good. Uh, Sean Maker got 83. He's got that uh, big boot that's just getting him lots of meters gained as well, so that's handy. Jack Hutchinson as well, if he keeps his spot, is mm-hmm. a trick, is an interesting one. But yeah, show and make it for two weeks from now. This and killed a rookie. Uh, it is really thin on the ground for your young folks. I've made, well, if you haven't got Kruger, he's he's going to be in I've the made team for a while. Three trades, and I've got seven left officially. I think I'm going to just not trade this one. I've bought in. I've bought in Caleb Sarong and Charlie Kerno. I've got 19 on field this week yeah. with eight trades remaining if I don't do anything this week, like, which I might do. That's banking do. on Sarong to fall under his break even last week because it was like 140 worked wonderfully for me. Nice one. All right, Captain C, what, off the top of your head, what are we looking at? It's a really tough week. Uh, this. I think my pick on the official Supercoach podcast was Sam Walsh Friday night against the Cats, probably into Sarong on Sunday. I am captaining Maximus Aurelius Gornicus <laughs> into Vice Captain B Grundy. So I've got to have to be quick on the trigger there. Ooh. I'm I'm going to go a bit of a weird one. Sheasel, he's been really consistent. On the G, I think the wide spaces of the G, Vice Captain against the Ds. The Ds have been very average. And then Captain possibly, when does Sydney play? Sydney play 4.30. Saturday so basically as Yabo. soon as that swans. Maybe Vice Captain Grundy into, that's what into yeah. Sheasel. Is my, might be a bit risky. but Because yeah. that's the thing. I'm Vice Captain Grundy into Captain Gorn mm-hmm. and it's 4.35, 7.30. Gorn against Cherry is a big one, but Gorn can dominate anyone. So. He averages like, what, 136 we'll or something at the MCG? He does. I remember does. Al telling me that. Yes. <laughs> Either way, it's a chaos week. It's a really weird one. So this is the last time we have the best 18. So oh, thank I gosh. can't wait to get to Sydney. I'm going to be oh, I'm gonna be NG oh, yeah, you're on going Saturday. On the, on the I'll be there. Oh. I'll be bringing the halftime vibes. I'll, there's no bad seats at that ground. I love going have there. You, have you been there? It's oh. just in the middle. It is a pain in the ass to get to. It is. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous. That'll be good. good. chat. I watched right. Carlton get deleted by GWS one day. All right. <laughs> That'll do us for the Midweek Madness Show of AFL Today. For today, we'll be back tomorrow with the AFL Today Show, of course, for the Thursday Night Teams Show. Uh, thank you to the Dinguses for jumping on, Alex. Uh, cheers, Jim. And the Stats Boy. Thank you. And, of course, our very good friend, Code Sports, is Eliza Riley. Yes. Very fun to get the uh, down low out west. Because really, I don't know, man. We just don't. <laughs> like, if Harley Reid's not, like, firing up... I, I spend, I a lot of, Frio, I spend yeah. like 80% of my time thinking about J-Train and nothing else. Yeah, so. I'm more just thinking about Bailey Band. I'm thinking about Oscar Allen. Gotta get the Oscar Allen t-shirts. Yeah. Anyway, smash a like across all of the socials for all of our shows, Cricket Today podcast, Football Today podcast, NBA Australia. After a massive NBA finals, we've got winners and losers coming up. Hold mm. all tickets as well. Yep. Uh, YouTube, Facey, IG, TikTok, X, you can find them all there. Uh, get around all of those. Subscribe, star. What else do you do? Tell them, mate. <laughs> Or stats go just stand outside your house really yeah, weirdly yeah. staring I've at you. I've been going around houses a lot lately. Uh, I get around them like Jason Dunstall getting around, I don't know, tearing shreds of Ben Dixon in the green room before taping <laughs> shows. That is funny. Uh, I did enjoy the Dermy story because, like, Dunstall is, like, a very personable dude. But very you can chill, also yeah. see it's just like, I just don't care. He like, loves his legend, alone time. When you're that Bachelor much of a pad, legend, yeah. like, you don't have to care. Yeah. It's pretty cool. So good on him. All right, that's it. We'll catch you tomorrow for the team show for more AFL today. Until then, look up yourselves and remember, 
footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.